Over the past three years, we've lost 25% of the dollar's purchasing power through inflation, but yet the economy, GDP, uh, corporate earnings tend to go on. Hi, this is Nathan with Independence Money. Today's topic is voting is for the ballot box, not for your investment portfolio. This first chart shows quite obviously that the market has been positive historically, indicative of who wins the political elections. Uh, to give you an example, Bush Sr. was about 13%, Clinton was about 16%, um, Obama about 12, Trump 14, and Biden at about 10.6. Of course, that's over three years. Um, these are not inflation adjusted returns. So over the past three years, we've lost 25% of the dollar's purchasing power through inflation, but yet the economy, GDP, uh, corporate earnings tend to go on. I think the bigger impact is going to be corporate and personal taxes as indicated by this chart. Um, that's going to be more what swings depending on who wins the election. And corporations, if their prices go uh, or if their costs go up due to rising corporate taxes, they have a way of passing that on to the consumer, which means higher prices. Obviously, that impacts inflation. Um, so I think for the purpose of this chart, uh, personal taxes are going to be more of a variable depending on who wins. And then moving on from there, uh, if you look at the market and you say, okay, we're worried about it being at an all-time high. Well, if you actually look at the market over long term, it consistently sets all-time highs. That's what an upward market means. So this is the Schiller adjusted for inflation PE ratio. Yes, we're sitting at the latest data at 35. Historically, it's at 26. But the market is a forward indicator and corporate earnings are forecasted to grow double digits over the next year. So that could bring that ratio more into line. Waiting for pullbacks and market timing historically doesn't work. This chart shows that if you're waiting for a 5% pullback, the average rate of return between pullbacks is a positive 13 and the number of days between pullbacks is almost a full year, pretty close at 291. So waiting to get in after a market pullback often means you missed out on the return prior to the pullback. The other thing I want to say about the market is look at money market funds, money sitting on the sidelines. During the 20, 2020 to 22 time period, we had 14.5 trillion. Now we have 6.3 trillion. As rates continue to drop, investors may be seeking a safe haven in investments elsewhere or yield in investments elsewhere and that money may flow into the market as well. So hopefully this helps you keep it a little bit more in a historical context. Y'all take care.